everyone, thank you for tuning in. I'm your instructor, Joy. Let me first play a tune for you. This was a little excerpt from Sing Songs Introduction and Rondo Capriccioso. Um, Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for your continued support and I wish you all Happy New Year. I hope all of you have had a wonderful holidays with families and friends. This video is an answer to a subscriber. Uh, this family has been asking for this one. Um, wondering how one could control overly bouncing bow stroke. Thank you very much for the good question. I'm sorry sometimes it takes a little long for me to answer all your questions. I'll try my best to answer all your questions as much as I can. So let's talk about one, what makes bouncy bow. First, let's start with that one. Bouncing bow straw, which makes the bow start away from the string and then finishes away from the string, has to do with the correct bow placement, correct bow angle, and correct right elbow support. So those three points has to be met. One has to place the bow in the bouncing spot, which is from the middle to the frog about this spot. Depending on the uh, speed, fast speed, fast uh, bouncing spot is in the middle, whereas slow bouncing is rather closer to the frog, a little about a quarter from the frog. Also, it's important that right elbow is supporting the, the bow about, I wouldn't say completely straight, but arm should not be overly low because we need the support or the weight of the arm because we want to apply enough weight so the bow wants to go away from the string. Remember when you look at this, the bow stick is bent downwards this way. So we, it is meant to bounce off but it just requires a specific throwing, just like when you throw a, a ball, it will bounce off. Similar uh, physics, you need to be able to throw it. In order to do that, you need to have enough support, which comes from the arm. Make sure you're not too low with the elbow. The third one is a right bow angle. We know that we can flatten the bow hair or tilt it. We use a flat bow hair for strong tone and tilt it for soft tone. Here, you want, if you have all flat hair, it will bounce a lot. It goes straight, like that, right? But if you tilt it, it's gonna still bounce it, but rather sideways. And this is how you control the degree of the bouncing. You wanna bounce a lot, use flat hair. If you bounce less, then tilt it, and then you will see it. So here, there are a little more than that, but let's start with that. So here we have um, uh, here. Now if I use all same angle of the flat hair, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's very hard to do for each one. So what I have to do is I have to adjust the angle or the degree of the bow hair. So what I'm doing is whenever I change string. The bow is interrupted, therefore it wants to bounce it more than usual. So I place my bow in a bouncing spot, but whenever I change the string, I tilt the bow hair so that I reduce the amount of bouncing um, the distance. So for example, if I may exaggerate, uh, tilt it, then if I know that I'm saying one string, then I flatten my hair, then tilt it a bit again to reduce the bouncing degree, then Again, if I know I'm going to stay in one string a little longer, then flat hair again, like this. On so on like that. Yeah, this is ever more important when you play high positions, because high positions you will even have more sensitive bow stroke. Um, another one, another one important uh, that you can remember when it comes to uh, bouncing, controlling bouncy bow is Remember, when you're placing the bow for a fast stroke, remember you're also throwing, uh, the bow is staying very close to the string while bouncing. It's not on the string. Look how closely the bow is staying. So 
this if I can do it just with that finger. See how close it is? Now here, that means the bow is what I'm making V-shape falling, something like this, in a very small way, and very close to the string, which is a bit different than when you do closer to the frog with a raised elbow, and rather rounder stroke, which makes rather U-shape that one. So one has to also know how short, how long the bow should be um, dropped in. Now, when you're using fast spiccato like this passage, one cannot use too much bow because the bow will bounce too much and then you're too far away and then it, the bow loses complete control, not only it, it's overly bouncing. So make sure, keep it, use, um, keep it very short bow, almost in the same spot. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very, very short one. It's a little hard to do demonstrate in a slower tempo because it has been a specific tempo. But that comes to uh, my third point, how one should practice. Because it has to do with a certain tempo, a certain correct placement, very precise and it almost leaves no flexibility. One has to practice in the correct tempo so that you practice using the correct bow placement and the correct supporting arm but um, when you're rather new instead of playing everyone each one speak out on each note as printed try to practice three times on each string each note this way you get to practice once down bow once up bow and Then you can later Then later you can try one and so on like that. Yeah. I hope you can try it yourself. Thank you for watching. I wish you all happy new year. Lots lots of wonderful music making. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again. Bye bye.